call in College Station, Texas, as the Aggies back home. The home of the 12th man will be rocking and rolling today at Kyle Field. Mississippi State in town trying to snap their losing streak. Two teams trying to find an identity as we approach the second half of the SEC football slate. It will be wild and crazy once again here in College Station as this is SEC football presented by Allstate. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to College Station in Kyle Field. I'm Dave Neal. This is former SEC Championship quarterback from the University of Georgia, DJ Shockley. And DJ, here we are, middle of the season. These two teams still trying to find kind of an identity. You look yeah. at Mississippi State, they've lost three straight. Meanwhile, Texas A&M, it's been a win-one, lose-one type situation throughout this season. As these teams kind of look ahead, this is a really big game for both these clubs. This is so important on so many levels. Both teams have a lot of young guys playing in this ball game. But the idea is we want to get to postseason. And you have to get to postseason. You have to win this ball game today. That makes this game just as important as any they played all year because they want to get these guys experience playing in the postseason. Anybody that follows college football and SEC football in general knows the name Kellen Mond. He's been quarterback in the Aggies now. He's 18 and 10 as a starter. But we talk about identity. And Texas A&M still kind of searching for that. And, and part of that is the fact that Kellen Mond's been more involved in the run game. Yeah, he's had to. You, you think about the last three games, Kylan Hill, his production has been down. So Kellen Mond has had to put a bulk of this offense on his shoulders. And it's a fine line of what Jimbo Fisher, the play caller, has to do with Kellen Mond. You don't want to run him too often where he could possibly get hurt, but you also you need him in the run game to get this offense going while Kyle Hill, you hope, gets going. Well, while Mond makes his 29th start of the season, we've got a young man that is just uh, breaking into SEC football, Garrett Schrader, the true freshman, getting the start now for Mississippi State. And much like Kellen Mond, he's a guy that can do, do a number of things at that quarterback position. Yeah, him himself has had to put a lot of things on his shoulders as well. This was a point in the ball game where he earned a lot of respect of his teammates by the way he is fearless with his body. He goes after it. He wants to be tough. He's a, a downhill kind of a tough guy. And they expect Schrader to put a bulk of this offense on his shoulders as well today. He is a big play waiting to happen. You see those 22 runs over 10 yards. He'll try to have more of those here this afternoon. And well, certainly speaking of Mississippi State, things are kind of up in the air in terms of their personnel. For more on that story, as they get set to take on the Aggies, let's go down to the field and Don Davenport. Well, Dave, they're actually without three key defensive starters today. Linebacker Willie Gay and defensive tackle Lee Autry, both serving a suspension for a violation of team rules. Also, starting corner Cameron Dantzler out with an upper body injury. Coach Joe Moorhead told me Tyler Will Williams, the sophomore, will get the start there because he has a little more experience than true freshman Jari and Jones. But you're going to see both of those guys rotate in. Now, Willie Gay, that's a tough one to replace. Defensive coordinator Bob Shoup said he's a game changer. Good news there. They got an experienced backer in senior Leo Lewis to step in. But, guys, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, total of six starters out for Mississippi State today. Texas A&M wins the toss. They defer, so Mississippi State will get their hands on it first this is an offense this year that has had its moments but still struggling a little bit to put points on the board at 25 points per game you see some of those offensive numbers but they have turned this over though to number six Garrett Schrader 6'4 220 great size well you don't realize really how big he is as a true freshman until you get down there on the field and watch him sling it around and you see what Darrell Williams his senior center says about him he's ready for these big time games and ready to make some big time plays they hope that happens today here at Kyle Field. Some pressure right out of the gates from Texas A&M. That one will one hop to Kylan Hill and trying to get him the football. And DJ, it has been tough sledding for number eight here the last few games. It has, and you can see first play out of the gate. They're trying to play to get him the football, whether it's a screen, whether it's throwing it out here on this little bubble screen. They're trying to force the football to Kylan Hill. You see the numbers, they don't match what you expect to see out of a guy like Colin Hill today, I expect them to get over 20 touches for Colin Hill. They'll toss it to Hill, working the left side, gets a couple of yards. Hey, well, there's a great matchup today we're going to keep an eye on. And Darrell Williams, who is just an outstanding 
football player, the senior center for Mississippi State. Allowed just one sack since the start of 2017. He's going to have his hands full today with Justin Matabike in the middle of that Texas A&M defensive line. Those are two awesome players to watch. Yeah, and he talked about how he scouted these guys coming to this ball game. So see if the scouting report works. They're going to definitely need him to play really good on the inside of this Mississippi State offense. Third down. Let's call it eight. Schrader hit. Loose football. They're going to say incomplete pass. Pocket collapsed immediately on Schrader. It'll be fourth down. Aaron Hansford, first one there. Yeah, he comes from right in the screen right here. And you see it coming right through number 33 and gets a kind of a delayed blitz. And you can see the emphasis there. They're trying to get pressure on this young quarterback now. And even with a quick throw, that football has to come out of the hands. And Gary Schrader has to get it thrown before the pressure gets there. So Hansford, the junior out of Washington. Coach just told us we'd see a lot of him on third down. And we just got a good look at that. Jace Crispin with the punt. Anaya Smith back to return it. Makes a man miss, and he'll get it out over the 30-yard line. A 49-yard punt and a four-yard return. So for Texas A&M, here comes their offense. You see where they rank in scoring. Seventh in the conference in scoring. It just... Uh, a tick under 31 points per game. Kellen Mond running the show, 18 and 10 as a starter. Jimbo Fisher talking about his signal caller, saying his decision making and command have gotten stronger each and every week. Those two are completely in sync right now in terms of what they're trying to accomplish. Two tight end look to start things off for A&M. They'll hand it off to the freshman Isaiah Spiller. But Kellen Mond's the key to this to this operation. You see what he's done, completing over 62% of his passes. But I think the addition of the run game has really helped him a little bit, too. Well, it gives him an opportunity to get involved in the game early. And sometimes for a quarterback, you have to get hit. You have to take a couple shots to get you going. And Kellen Mond is the same way. But don't make no doubt about it. This guy is a guy who likes to throw the football. They will swing it to the wide side of the field. Spiller makes the catch. Breaks a couple of tackles, and he's out near midfield. That'll be a first down. Chauncey Rivers drags him to the turf. And here's what they want to do. They want to get some of their playmakers, like Spiller, who's a true freshman, in space with Mississippi State and force him to tackle. This is a high percentage throw here for Kelly Mon. Nothing but like a, a long toss to Spiller, and he does the rest. 13-yard pickup makes it first down and 10 from the Aggie 49. Spiller. Not a whole lot of room. Will fall forward for a couple of yards. Isaiah Spiller, the freshman out of Spring, Texas. They've had some issues at running back with some injuries and whatnot. And it, it's fallen on the shoulders of a true freshman, but they really like him. They think, matter of fact, Jimbo Fisher was telling us yesterday, this guy is a 20-25 a game carry guy. Yeah, and he runs tough. He runs behind his pads, knows when to use his leverage with his offensive lineman. He's becoming a smarter tailback. And Kellen Mond needs a guy like that back there with him who can help him take some of that load off. Pass caught. Cameron Buckley making the reception, only picks up a couple of yards. So now it'll be third down. Brian Cole, the safety on the stop for the Bulldogs. Defensively, Mississippi State giving up over 28 points a game. That is uh, 12th in the conference. A little bit under 400 yards of total offense, but, you know, I think both these teams really have been fighting it in terms of who's going to be there every Saturday. What kind of lineup can we throw out there? Yeah, Dom mentioned it in the open. There are a bunch of guys who are not here playing today for Mississippi State, and the same for Texas A&M. Which guy's going to step up to the plate and make a big play for them? Sell Mississippi State sells out defensively, passes incomplete. Osmond was the intended target. Jari and Jones, the true freshman, making the play. Yeah, Mississippi State goes cover zero blitz. Bring everybody. You have one guy that's unaccounted for. They have an opportunity to complete this football, but no separation on the outside. And a nice job by Jari and Jones, who Don talked about was going to come in here and play 
in replace of Cameron Dance that does a great job, a really good job on that play. Braden Mann, the reigning Ray Guide Award winner. Averaged 52 yards a kick last week, averaging just shy of 50 per punt this year. Fair catch called for at the 10 yard line by Malik Deer. Each team's had a possession, nothing on the board. Back to College Station after this. SC lost at home to LSU last weekend. They're having to fight some of these uh, violation of team rules, suspensions. It's just been really tough to kind of get some continuity this year for Mississippi State. And that's why this game is so critical for, for them to play well. Schrader hit again, gets the pass away. And of course, the latest you know news the last 10 days, two weeks is that Rutgers opportunity. What are they going to do about a head coach? Joe Moorhead's name keeps popping up. We've actually, Don actually asked him the question point Blake. Don, what was his reaction to that? Yeah, specifically, how did he communicate it with his team? He said that when the rumors first came out, some of the freshmen brought it up to him during one of their leadership council meetings early in the week, said he told them he's not going anywhere. Look at the young talent here. The future is bright. Dave, he said it's been a non-issue within the team for a few weeks now. Obviously, we are still talking about it. I don't think those things ever die until they hire a coach. Inside handoff goes to Kylan Hill. Buddy Johnson, the middle linebacker there to meet him. Maybe a yard on the play. But you know what helps all this stuff that's out there floating around, all the Winning. peripheral stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's that's the equalizer. And it was interesting to hear he say some of his freshmen brought it up. And you got to think those are the guys that he's recruited to come here and say, we're going to change our program. And he wants to see these guys succeed. So. Being open and honest with those guys is probably the most important thing, and hopefully these kids play for them. A&M going with a dime package on third down, and let's call it a long nine yards for the Bulldogs. Darrell Williams about to snap it right from the 10-yard line. Good clean snap. Four-man rush by the Aggies. Schrader, there's a flag in the backfield. Schrader running around trying to pick up the first down. He does have a lot more out to the 35. A heck of a run, but this one might be coming back. 25 yard game. Now you talk about right tackle on the outside. Greg Elam, who's the one who's get caught for the holding call. Right there on Tyree Johnson. More quicker guy from the outside. Rushes, beats him to the inside, and knows his quarterback is still inside the pocket. Grab that shoulder pad. Lucky for Mr. State, he wasn't in the end zone. But. It negates a big run from Garrett Schrader. So now that'll back him up to the five yard line. Here's Hill. He gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Jaden Peavy along with Elijah Blades coming up. To make the stop for Texas A&M. And they'll force back-to-back -back punts now for the Bulldogs. Well, those are the type of drives that hurt you from Mississippi State. When you get some positivity going with your quarterback, maybe that was something to get him going. You get the holding call, and now you're backed up. Texas A&M looking at great field position. Ideal start for Texas A&M and their defense. Tucker Day will punt that away to midfield. Anaya Smith with the catch, a 42-yard punt, but excellent field position for Kellen Mond and the Aggies. They'll have the football when we come back. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Well, the Agricultural and Mechanical College of Texas, which is now known as Texas A&M, was opened in 1876 south of Bryan, Texas, at a location that became known as College Station, named for this railroad depot used by college students. It's now home to the Benjamin Knox Gallery. You see some of the artwork, the landscapes, spirited collegiate art in there as well. Actually has a little wine bar, nice little place over there. A little history for you. 
on Texas a and I try to do that, DJ. I try to bring a little light conference. people a little bit. No and you. I try to light you a little bit. I knew all about that. No, <laughs> I knew nothing about that. It looked nice, though. I mean, it looked like some good art in there. You got any artistic bone in your body? Then? None. <laughs> None. <laughs> I'm just an athlete. I like that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. In my own mind. <laughs> second down and seven. Aggie, second possession. First one had to punt it away. They'll go handoff to the freshman Isaiah Spiller. Inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Landrews drags him down, but a 24-yard pickup. Watch number 55 here. Gets a nice seal block on the edge, which creates the lane for Spiller to run through. Watch him just create that seal. And then the patience of Spiller to run through there. And he just he does an outstanding job here in space and running hard and physical. We talked about him earlier. Once he gets going. He is a low to bring down. The right guard, a freshman, Kenyon Green at a humble Texas, 6'4, 330. Here's Spiller again. Breaks another tackle. Has another first down inside the 15. Down to the 13 yard line. Landrews again having to force him out of bounds, but a 12 yard gain. The physicality in which he runs with. Dan Moore, number 65, the left tackle, comes around and kicks out that in, and here comes Spiller running through arm tackles, picks up another first down. We found something in the run game here with Isaiah Spiller, and he's starting to emerge as that top back for Texas A&M. Spiller has a couple of 100-yard games in his young career, but lately just struggling. Last four games, just 115 yards rushing, averaging 2.9 yards per carry. First down throw from Mon coming near side. Jalen Wiedemeyer. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the one yard line. A gain of 11. And watch Wiedemeyer put his head down, try to get it. Does he get that ball over the pylon? That's really close there. Takes that is going to hurry up and go, though. They'll hand it off. Spiller flagged down on the other side of the field. In the end zone, well, that's 30 yards away from the offsides, from the football. Offside on the defense, number 41, lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay, first down. I still wonder if Wadimer got in the end zone on that RPO run that he had to catch Please a throw. Please reset the game clock to six minutes, 59 seconds. Six, five, nine. Thank you. So they'll move it inside the one yard line. Kellen Mond will keep it himself and he will get it across the goal line. Touchdown, Aggies. The fourth rushing touchdown of 2019 for the junior quarterback. Capitalizing on the great, great field position that they had there. Takes it down the field, makes a running pass. Spiller was big on that drive, and Mon caps it off with the QB sneak. Seth Small to attempt the point after, and he will split the uprights. So Texas A&M scores for the first time today. They lead Mississippi State 7-0. Nothing, Texas A&M out in front of Mississippi State. 6.50 to go here in the first quarter. Always great to be at Kyle Field, one of the unique and just uh, meccas of college football. Are you saying unique because of those two individuals we just saw on the screen there? Yes. <laughs> Jimbo Fisher, of course, national championship in his back pocket back in 2013, trying to get this headed in that direction now in his second season. Five active head coaches with a national championship to his credit. He and Kellen Mond have uh, they've become attached at the hip a little bit. These two guys. Yeah, this happens every single time they come off the field. There has to be constant communication between the quarterback and the play caller. And Jimbo is a guy who goes through every single play with Kellen, and they make sure they're on the same page and making sure they have all the right. Checks and communications going throughout a series. So 
That's what you want out of your quarterback and the guy who's calling the plays. Make sure everybody understands what we're trying to get accomplished. Nick Gibson in at running back now for Mississippi State. He'll get the handoff here and he'll take it out close to the 30 yard line. One of the things that Jimbo Fisher said about Kellen Mond, how much he was impressed by the fact that they could have a 10 11 play drive and he can remember every single play of that drive what the defense looked like what kind of formation they were in so it's easy to talk to him about a drive and what he saw he's a smart guy uh, but I know as a quarterback you want to make sure you know exactly what the coach is going to ask you when you come off good run there by Gibson blades pushes him out of bounds he'll have a first down and a gain of eight and we talked about it in the open Gary Schrader needs a run game whether it's coming from Colin Hill or whether it's coming from Nick Gibson they have to have some semblance other than just him as a runner to be successful on offense and you see they start this drive off with a couple good runs. Schrader starts today 0 for 3 throwing the football Had a nice 24 yard run nullified by a holding call by right tackle Tommy Champion. Schrader dancing around nowhere to go and he may have lost a yard. Out of EK led the way big 5 2 in the middle of that defensive line. Boy, he's some kind of athlete. Yeah, he is an athletic guy from the inside standpoint. Gets off a block, but I think the counter for Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator for Texas AM, versus this Mississippi State style offense is they're going to add another guy to the box almost every time they're in this bunch or tight formation. See defense coordinator Mike Elko there. But they walk a safety down almost every play to help in the run game. Schrader. Boy, doesn't have any time to throw the football. Just gets out of bounds and is pushed out of bounds, and that'll be a free 15 for Mississippi State. Play was over. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number three on the defense. Penalty is 15 yards. Automatic first down. Tyree Johnson, the sophomore, just couldn't pull up in time, and that'll cost him 15 and get it inside Aggie territory. That's a tough call because it looked like he was trying to pull up, and he barely got a, a hand on Gary Schrader, and obviously Schrader goes down. But that's a big penalty. After you pretty much had the play stop. So the ball will sit just inside the 47 yard line. Schrader going up top, looking for a big play, can't hit it. It was there and it falls incomplete, trying to hit Stephen Gidry. Blades on the coverage. And it's Blades who can't get off the turf. Oh, this would be a big hit to Texas A&M if Blades is unable to come back in this ball game. Was hurt for an extended time. He is one of their best corners, and talked about him. They needed him on that back end. While they attend to Blades, we'll step aside. Timeout on the field. Back in a moment. Elijah Blades on the coverage of Gidry and fell awkwardly and came up looked like he was grabbing the shoulder the right shoulder and he is still on the turf. <sighs> Elijah Blaze they consider their best cover guy has three tackles today the junior is a junior college transfer out of Arizona Western College four star junior college recruit. As DJ said, that is a big blow to that secondary if he's not able to come back. Yeah, he's a one of their top guys. You see, they don't mind putting him on an island by himself. He's one on one on the outside there, had pretty good coverage. And expecting big things out of Elijah Blades, not just in this season, but today. He's been a huge part of what they want to do. So not having him, you see him holding that right shoulder gingerly. He's already got three tackles on the deck. 
So you wonder if Joe Moorhead will go right at that spot with his young quarterback Garrett Schrader out of Charlotte North Carolina young man won back to back state championships in high school. Lofts it up just off the fingertips of Farah Green the tight end. Well, that was close. We talk about Matt BK in the middle. He's right here over the center. Watch the pressure that he gets right up the middle and forces Gary Schrader to throw this football earlier than he wanted to. He is just tough to block on the inside. He almost got it off. It could have been a big play, but when you have 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds to get the football off and the guy's right in the middle of that defensive front, it is tough. And you see the numbers early for Gary Schrader are not good. They're only after two yards per play right now. Third down and ten. Schrader spins out of trouble. Gets it off, but it is incomplete. They're going to say turnover. They're going to say taken away by the Aggies. Devin Morris coming up with the play, and Texas A&M is in business. This was the number one key in the ball game for the Mississippi State defense to get turnovers. And that's a good catch. It looks like he just takes it away from him when he rolls over. He just takes it away from Zuber. Zuber's on the ground with the football. All right, my question is if Zuber's on the ground he's with down. the football, he's down. He's got to be down. I think you're spot on thinking that way, Dave. I mean, he catches the football. He's on the ground. That ball's dead now. The story is it was third down. They're well shy of the line to gain. But you might be tempted where they are to go for it on fourth down. But was the ball bouncing off of Zuber? Was it that he did? Yeah, I think he's down there. Now, former SEC official and our rules analyst Matt Austin is with us back in our studios and maybe he can give some clarity to what we just saw. Matt what did you see there. Yeah Dave and DJ if he if the player the receiver is going to the ground if he has firm control of the ball you're exactly right he would be down but if he's bobbling it in any way and the defender gets in there and takes it away and rolls away with it then it would be an interception. Uh, the replay officials got to look at a couple things here. Did he have firm control. Did the ball hit the ground in between the process of taking it away if he didn't have firm control. So this could be this could be ruled a catch. It could be ruled an incomplete pass or it could be ruled as a uh, as an interception depending on what the replay official thinks he sees. All right. I think it's hard to see if there's a bobble at all and then we're getting a call here after further review ruling on the field stands of an interception first down Texas so Devin Morris he's been banged up we didn't know how much we would see Devin today but old number seven just came up with a turnover and now Mississippi State will have to play some defense short field again now for the Aggies scored on their last drive on a short one yard touchdown run by Kellen Mond first down and 10 from the 45 Mond to throw looking deep down the field nobody's there looking for Courtney Davis and that's been an area of concern for Texas A&M that is the deep ball big plays haven't had many this season they've got three plays of 40 plus yards this year and that's it. They're looking for more explosive plays. Jimbo said he wants to take five to eight explosive a game and throw the football down the field. But that was a force. Just because you call a shot play does not mean as a quarterback you have to throw it. There's a safety in the middle of the field. You have to find your check down or use your legs to create. So on second down and 10. Spiller will carry it out over the 45. He'll get Maybe two on the plate. Chauncey Rivers with another tackle. That's three for the defensive end. The senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yeah, if anybody's going to get some pressure on the quarterback today, it'll be 
a disruptive factor. It's number five, Chauncey Rivers for Mississippi State. They lean on him a lot to get pressure. Two and a half sacks on the season, four and a half with tackles for loss. Has played really good on the edge for Mississippi State this season. Third down and nine. Comes some pressure up the middle, and you can make a third down and about four as Leo Lewis jumps across. Offside, number 10 on the defense. Five yard penalty, third down. Both middle linebackers coming right through that A-gap, looking to get some pressure and force that football out of the hands of Kellen Mond. But that makes it a lot easier call for Jimbo Fisher here with it being third and four as opposed to third and nine. Mond, three out of five today, throwing the football. Looks to throw it here. Pocket collapses, will throw on the run. Pass is caught by Kendrick Rogers, and that'll be good enough for a first down at the Bulldog 43-yard line, a six-yard pickup. The patience you like here by Kellen Mon. Nothing was there initially going through his progressions. End up hitting Kendrick Rogers as he comes all the way across the formation. And now that third and four, that penalty on third down bodes well for Texas A&M. They pick up a key first down. Runner with Spiller. Spiller will break a tackle and lose a yard. Isaiah Spiller had 116 yards rushing against Lamar, 106 versus Texas State. Great connection to the Aggie football program as his dad, Fred, was a tight end here at Texas A&M under R.C. Slocum. Mons pass over the middle is caught by Davis. He's inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. That's 21 yards for Texas A&M. Well throw football by Kellen Mond. They got triple slant going on. He's the inside guy, Courtney Davis. And Courtney Davis runs through that zone and does a good job of just yards after catch. Davis had a season low one grab last week against Ole Miss, a game that Texas A&M held on to win 24 to 17, had a nice drive to end the game, trying to close it out. Kellen Mond, a big part of that drive, running the football. Kellen Mond sends some pressure here. Mond will keep it. Great vision, got behind his big boys up front. And he'll pick up five yards. Isaiah Spiller here is the lead blocker for him. You see Carson Green out there as well. Taking on Errol Thompson. Takes on the blunt of the, uh, of the contact, but sometimes just being in the way is just enough. And does a good job of getting his quarterback on the edge. And now you got a second and medium with a quarterback that can throw it or run it. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Mond will throw it, double clutches. See, so had Tyler Williams coming right in his face, made him readjust the throw. And you love the recognition. He sees corner blitz, and now he just has to deliver a football to him in a way that he can catch it. He has the double clutch that you see there, but he has to be a little, has to throw a little bit more accurate pass there to give Osborne an opportunity there. Well, Mississippi State seems like they're bringing a pressure from one side or the other every snap. And you can see that is <laughs> what they want. That's the equalizer for them on defense. Shoop is not going to allow his defense to sit back and allow Kellerman to dictate this ball game. Some more pressure over the middle. Pass is caught again by Davis. He'll have the first down, but he grabs his right leg. Oh, boy. A 
There have already been so many injuries on the defensive side of the ball for Texas A&M this season. Now you're losing one of your premier receivers. Courtney Davis, the junior out of Houston. Yeah, and it looks like when he rolls over here, you see that right leg as he rolled over on him there to make the tackle. It's C.J. Morgan. Oh, man. It's a good sign, though, to see him getting up, walking off on his own. Courtney Davis, a kid, 11 career touchdowns. Had two touchdowns for Arkansas. So Kellen Mon, six of nine, 59 yards to start this game. We'll work with a fresh set of downs just outside the 10 yard line. Mond will keep it. He's to the five. Touchdown. Texas A&M from 12 yards out. Kellen Mond with his fourth, making his fifth rushing touchdown of 2019. Boy, that was an efficient drive for Texas A&M. A lot of that had to do with the arm of Kellen Mond, making some decisions with the football, getting the ball out of his hands quickly on some quick slants and receivers making some yards after the catch. But that's the part of the game that Jimbo Fisher loves about Kellen Mond, his decision-making and being able to throw the football to the right spot. Seth Small connects on the point after. Nine plays, 55 yards, a little over four minutes off the clock. And the second touchdown run of the day for number 11. Here's a zone read action. Here's who Kelly Mond is reading. If he crashes down, Kelly Mond pulls it on the edge. And this is exactly what happens. He's reading that defensive end, Fletcher Adams. He crashes down and pulls the football out. And now he's on the edge doing what he does really well, run with the football in his hands into the end zone for a big score for Texas A&M. Touchdown lead here in the first quarter for Texas A&M. They're trying to win back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. They have been on a win-one-lose-one, win-one-lose-one streak since we started this year. I guess the good news is you haven't lost back-to-back -back games. The bad news is that? you haven't won back-to-back -back games. <laughs> Braden Mann will kick it away. This will sail into the end zone, out to the 25-yard line we will go. Let's go downstairs, get an update from Dawn. Yeah, guys, last time the Steve Smiths was on the field, Elijah Blades injured that right shoulder. He spent a significant amount of time in the injury tent. Almost that entire offensive possession for Texas A&M came out, put his helmet on, and it looks like he's ready to go. Boy, that's great news. They attended to him quite some time on the field before they even got him to the tent. And now Blades is back on the field. Looks like he's got some sort of wrap on that right shoulder. We'll keep an eye on that. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. They'll work from the far hash mark. Quick hitter. Picks up four. The Farad Green, the tight end. And that will be the end of the first quarter that saw Schrader pick up his first completion of the game. See if he can keep that rolling into quarter number two. SEC Network football is presented by Allstate as we get set for the second quarter as Texas A&M leads it 14 to nothing here at Kyle Field on a rather cool Saturday early afternoon. In College Station, Joe Moorhead and his offense, he's just trying to find some off, uh, just some answers offensively. And this guy is considered one of the premier offensive minds in the country, of course. 
two years in a row while he was at Penn State as the OC was the National Offensive Coordinator of the Year. Working with quarterback like Trace McSorley certainly helps things out, doesn't it? Oh. Here goes Kylan Hill. Breaks a tackle. It's a foot race. Hill is tripped up at the 35, and that's something Kylan Hill's been searching for the last month. And 36 this is a, yards. A matchup you like. Kylan Hill on Buddy Johnson. He's right there in the hole, and he runs right through the tackle of Buddy Johnson. And this is what Mississippi State needs. Kylan Hill to get going early. In the first quarter, three carries for eight yards. Now they're starting to create some lane for him to run, and that'll open up everything for Schrader and its offense. First down and ten for the Bulldogs. Schrader will keep it, dancing around, gets it close to the 31-yard line. Jaden Peavy there to make the stop. Well, that was a much-needed play, I think, for Kylan Hill. I think for Mississippi State's offense. It's a confidence builder for a running back that hasn't really had any production in the last three games to have a run like that. It may kickstart him into a big game today. Raider going toward the end zone. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Steven Gidry with the reception, 32 yards. And the Bulldogs are on the board, and he beat Elijah Blades, who was slow to get up again. You see Gidry's down here at the bottom. He's going to run a post here over the top and does a great job of getting inside of Blades. And you got this quarters coverage, and he just lays it out for him, giving his guy an opportunity to go up for the football. And Gidry, what a big-time play, being aggressive, high-pointing that football and taking it out of the air. And not good for Texas A&M seeing Blades down. 32-yard touchdown reception for Gidry. Had a 24-yard touchdown catch against LSU. Actually coming off a really good game where he had six grabs, almost 100 yards receiving against that Tiger secondary. He comes up big with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. But you know what? I, again, I go back to the run by Kylan Hill. Right. And if Kylan doesn't bust that tackle from Buddy Johnson... This drive probably still back there around midfield somewhere. You're right, Dave. And the, and the key part about that particular play was the safety that was to the side of Gidry. He does a, he kind of sits right at the edge there. And you see Buddy Johnson right here in the middle of your screen. The play action affects him. It affects the safety. And watch guys come up. And then you see him just run through there. And that's a big time run there. Running through the arm tackle of Buddy Johnson, who is one of their top players on defense, creates that huge play for this Mississippi State offense. So Blades will walk off the field again, holding that right shoulder. You just wonder how much he's going to keep going out there and that kind of pain. Case Crispin to attempt the point after. And he will split the uprights. Bulldogs get on the board, cut the lead in half behind the touchdown pass from Schrader to Gidry. Bulldogs needed that one in a bad way. Gotta fear the beard, right? <laughs> Garrett Schrader. Dave, I'm waiting for you to grow a beard like this. Ain't happening, brother. What a, why not? Because I don't what know that it? I could get back in my house. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, well, Schrader with his fifth <laughs> touchdown pass of the season. He hits Stephen Gidry. Schrader was 0 for 6 to start this game, but is 
has hit his last two for 36 yards and a touchdown. Boy, short kick taken at the 15 yard line by Preston. And he's out to the 35 yard line. So decent field position for Texas A&M. Time for Belk playing with style, winning with style, I should say, as Kellen Mond has now become a part of the Texas A&M run game by design. He and Jimbo Fisher don't want to do it a lot, but they got to do it enough to keep the defense honest and two touchdown runs, albeit short, for Kellen Mond today. DJ, you, you were kind of a running dual threat guy. Yeah. Did you like it when your number was called to run the football? I didn't mind it because it's kind of used the way they use Kellen Mond, sparingly when you need it to keep a defense honest, like you mentioned. To have a guy like that in this system, it gives you a lot of options. And Kellen Mond is such a dual threat with the football in his hands. And you want your best players to have the football in their hands, and Kellen Mond is that for Texas A&M. It's a fine line, though, with, with that. You start looking at their roster, and behind Kellen Mond is a true freshman. You, you got to be real careful. I think, and I think there's types of runs that can help him, too. Sometimes you don't want your quarterback running through the trenches. You can put him on the perimeter or the edge, and he has to know when to get down, too. Spiller will pick up a couple of yards. We talked to Jimbo about that yesterday, and here's what he says about the quarterback game, and you have to understand there's only so much physical pounding you can take. He was even talking about get, you get hit harder in the pocket sometimes, but still, the, it's the amount, the quantity of hits. He talks about Cam Newton. Now he's kind of broken down because of the way he plays the game. So it's a fine line, according to the coach, on how much you want to run the quarterback. But it certainly has helped Texas A&M offensively here the last couple of weeks. It has, and he makes a good point because you're not the guy who's kind of giving out the, the hit. Sometimes they're, they're bringing it to you. Pass over the middle, caught by Osmond. Landrews there to make his fifth tackle from the safety spot, a gain of six for Texas A&M. And they've also good to see number one Courtney Davis back on the field for Texas A&M. Broken tackle in the backfield by Spiller. He will fall inside the 45, picks up three and a first down for the Aggies. Boy, something Texas A&M has done well this year, and it's it depends on the team and and really the year. But time of possession has been a big part of Texas A&M's offense. This year they have won the possession time of possession battle all but one game this year matter of fact they were plus eight over Ole Miss last weekend Alabama's the only team that's had the football more than A&M and that was only for about a minute 45 more than Texas A&M there's Courtney Davis working hard to get it inside the 30 yard line he'll pick up 14. I continue to preach. He's doing such a good job of getting the football out of his hands. And look at this nice precision route here. Doesn't run into coverage. And then it gets vertical. Gets north and south. That's what you teach receivers. Once you catch the football, let's get north and south and pick up more positive yards. From the 29. Mon steps up in the pocket. Sees some room to run, and he will scamper to the 15, to the 10. Big hit at the five-yard line as he is popped there, but a flag comes out at the end of that play after a 25-yard gain by Kellen Mond. There's all kinds of flags, pushing and shoving going on. C.J. Morgan was the man who came up to make the hit on Mond. Jimbo's going to be living because this is probably going to be it's going to end up offsetting and they would have great field position there but just an untimely untimely penalty for Texas A&M coming after it looks like it was going to be on Mississippi State. Oh, Jimbo's down there chewing on Colton Prater. Well, 
Well, there's a lot to sort out here. Personal foul targeting number 29 on the defense. That play is under further review. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct number 76 on the offense. That is number 76, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. See C.J. Morgan coming in there. He's the one who's called for the targeting penalty. And he, he hits Kellerman right under the chin. And the number one question is, does he leave with that helmet? And Kellerman's not a defenseless player. He sees him coming. He's running. Well, Matt Austin, our rules analyst, is standing by. And, Matt, what do you make of that particular call? Well, the defender comes in. It looks like he does lower his head, and it looks like he puts the crown of his helmet right into the chin of the quarterback. Now, there's also a lot of contact with the face mask. It looks like to the defender, or excuse me, the quarterback's chest. So what the replay official has to decide here is, is this an attack? Uh, is that lowering of the head enough to have the indicator? And is there um, forcible contact to the head neck area? So I, I, this is going to be unfortunate, but I have a feeling this one's going to be confirmed. C.J. Morgan is six foot tall. Kelly Mon is six three. If he's coming in to hit him, his helmet's gonna be right below where the helmet strike zone is. So I know if I'm C.J. Morgan. After review, there was no targeting on the play. The 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number 76 will be enforced. Well, that's a win. Let's bring Matt back in. Yeah, I, I think what the replay official saw there is what the contact was with the face mask to the chest. And it's unfortunate there was a little contact to the, to the helmet, but I think the main contact was in the chest. And I do think this is a, a good call. I think the defender was just playing football, trying to make a good hard tackle. And unfortunately, he got a little high, but I don't think it rises to the level that he should be ejected. So I think this is a good overturn. And that, right. was, and that was my thing. Uh, yeah. I love the fact that they would go back and look at it and be able to overturn that because there's no reason he needed to come out of the football game. He was trying to just make a tackle. But I tell you what, you know who loses in that whole situation is Texas A&M. They <laughs> yeah. were down at the five-yard line, and the 15-yard penalty, Max, backs him up to the 20. Yep. Mond will throw on first down. Going up top to the end zone, wide is Osmond touchdown from 19 yards out. Javon Osborne, first off the release. He does a good job of getting off that release and they're playing cover two and just a well-thrown football. He tried to get hands on Osborne there, but he just throws a high angle corner route to that back pylon and not much Mississippi State could do there. Point after is up and good and Texas A&M didn't waste any time. They may have lost on the penalty situation but they definitely won on the first play after that sequence as Kellen Mond strikes for the 14th touchdown pass of the season. Jamon Osmond his old high school roommate on the other end. Thank you, Peter. Here, Texas A&M out 21-7 on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Kellen Mond, Jamon Osmond connecting on that last touchdown. His man will kick it away. Isaiah Zuber on the return. He is wrapped up just across the 15-yard line. Last three drives for AM, 21 plays, 171 yards. Here's the safety here. They're playing quarters. He has to bail more. Rodgers comes through and affects him. So now when he comes in on this corner route, he is wide open because the corner does not bail enough. He's affected here, but he has to continue to sink. Nothing is underneath, so he has to get under that corner route. And then watch the eyes of the veteran quarterback, Kelly Mond, looking at that safety and understanding where he wants to go to football, holds him in the middle of the field. And an easy touchdown throw for Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond off to a good start today. 10 of 13, 109 yards and a touchdown through the air. Schrader 
Again, pocket collapses, throws, long throw, out of bounds, and looking for Osiris Mitchell. Clifford Chapman back there in coverage for the Aggies. And I don't mind the first down throw there from Mississippi State. They did exactly what you would think. Texas A&M comes up, put another guy in the box, thinking they're going to run the football. You got man coverage on the outside. The receivers just did not win there. Tyler Hill, four carries, 44 yards today. He stands to the right of Schrader. He'll give him the football on this possession and he'll get it out over the 20, but it'll be a third and long situation coming up for the Bulldogs. Texas A&M being stout in the middle. Out of BK, Bobby Brown, those guys in the middle have really been stout up front. But here comes the third down and the what do you want to do if you're Mississippi State throwing the football? I haven't had a lot of success throwing the football down the field. You have to give Garrett Schrader some time. Third down and seven. Pressure comes. Schrader runs away from it, and he will be dropped. They will mark him down at the 14 yard line. Devin Morris from his corner spot got there in a hurry. They plug the A gap to then bring that perimeter blitz right off the edge from that nickel spot. And he gets home on Garrett Schrader. Just, I just mentioned it. They have to do a better job of protecting Garrett Schrader. And they were trying to throw the football down the field. The Rouse had just not processed yet on the back end for him to throw the football. Low kick. Tucker Day will get a favorable bounce. It'll stop around the Aggie 43-yard line. Wasn't pretty, but still 43-yard punt. Hey, coming up, 4 o'clock Eastern time, week 9 of the college football season continues on right here on the SEC Network. South Carolina taking on Tennessee at Neyland Stadium. And then tonight, our SEC Saturday night matchup, Missouri taking on the Cats in Lexington. Well, anxious to see how Missouri responds to that loss last week. They were sitting pretty in the SEC East and just laid an egg in yeah. Nashville last week. Missouri has struggled on the road 0-2 this year, 5-0 at home. Going on the road again versus Kentucky. See if they can get Lynn Bowden going on offense for Kentucky. First down and 10 from the 43-yard line. Mon, quick throw near side. That one's to Davis. We'll get it close to midfield. AM has scored on three consecutive drives. Another really good decision from Kellen Mon. They go RPO action. Linebackers tucked inside, so he throws it out to the bubble to Courtney Davis. And now look where you are on second down. Favorable for an offense to do whatever you want with it, as Mississippi State has a guy down on the back end. Looks like Brian Cole on the back back in for Mississippi State. Well I don't know how many more injuries they can stand at Mississippi State. They're running out of bodies back in a moment. Brian Cole being attended to by that training staff and young man he started his collegiate career at Michigan transferred to East Mississippi Community College and has found his way to Starkville on the back end has been solid. There's still a little left of the tank. Coach is talking about how good he could be. That man, preseason All-American Cameron Dantzler, a junior uh, a corner, not playing today. It has uh, been a tough sled for this secondary. Matter of fact, there are times we're seeing two true freshman corners, Jari and Jones, Martin Emerson, out there for Mississippi State. Richardson with his first carry today off the right side. He'll pick up three. Boy, Texas A&M in no hurry today. This is a interesting spot on the field for Jimbo. It looks like a lot of interchange going on and 
Texas A&M trying to get the right crew on the field. Uh, this is the day and age. Third and one, and you got five wide on the field. On third down and short. Mont hit as he throws. It's incomplete. Well, that pocket collapsed in a hurry. Fletcher Adams got there to put the hit on Kellen Mond. Comes right off his right edge here. They bring the blitz from Errol Thompson. And the tackle just does not go to out and get it. Fletcher does a great job of just coming through and getting that hit on Kellen Mond on third and one and forcing him to throw the football. So Braden Mann back to punt for the Aggies. End over end kick. Malik Deer will let it hit at the five. And is there anybody better? We know how great his leg is, Man. but his ability to stop a ball inside the 10 yard line is absolutely amazing. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody punt like him. It's just been crazy. 21 7, AM out in front, 6.38 to go here in the second quarter. While we have a break in the action, let's throw it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. Thank you, Laura. Great to see her today back on the set after spending some time on maternity leave. She's got a growing family. Pretty cool to see Laura back on the set, having a good time. None of the boys are happy to have her back. Boy, some strong running inside by Nick Gibson, but lost the football, and the Aggies have it at the 20. Gibson going for every yard he can get, but it cost him the football. That's tough for a back to run and try to get extra yards, and he's fighting, he's fighting, he's fighting. You see here, he's fighting guys off, and this is what defense guys do. They hold you up, and one guy rips that football out. And an opportune time there for Texas a and to get the football out. And it's simply what they talked about. They needed to do in this ball game. You see already two turnovers for this Texas a and defense. Debian Renfro with the fumble recovery. Richardson. Rips that thing out of there. Boy, another youngster for Texas A&M, a true freshman making a big play for the Aggies, setting up their offense here. They'll run it off the right side with Isaiah Spiller. He'll pick up three. Spencer with his fourth tackle for Mississippi State. Boy, Nick Gibson fumbled last week against LSU. Matter of fact, that fumble by Gibson last week against LSU snapped a streak of 489 consecutive carries without a fumble. For Mississippi State now Gibson's turned it over twice in consecutive weeks. Second down for the Aggies split spiller out in motion pass over the middle incomplete looking for Davis as Mond was wrapped up again in a hurry Boy, that pocket just collapsing quickly right now. And you see who came in and got the hit who we just saw go out the ball game last series is Brian Cole right off the edge here timing up the blitz just right coming off the backside of Kelly Mon, he gets the football off, but you can see defensive coordinator Bob Shoot is not sitting back for Shakers no. A&M. He is coming today. So now third down and seven. Let's split two receivers to each side. Spiller in the game to the left of Kelly Mon. Looks like more pressure. Oh, they're bringing it. Everybody, it seems like. Aggies pick it up. A couple of broken tackles for Rodgers. Still on his feet. Touchdown! Oh, my goodness. What a run from Kendrick Rodgers. Just the extra effort here. See if he gets any part of his body down as he's fighting off Mississippi State defenders. Oh, it looks like that. I think his right hand on the backside of his hand goes down as he fights here. Watch now his right hand right here as he rolls over to push himself off the ground. There's that right hand, the backside of it. 
touched the ground. But incredible effort from Kendrick Rogers. Incredible effort to try to get into the end zone. Bulldogs selling out again defensively. Aggies pick it up. And how about Kellen Moss standing in there, pressure coming down. They bring in extra defenders. Know he has a couple guys unblocked, stands in there and delivers a strike. And might get paid off with a touchdown pass. Waiting to see if this touchdown will be confirmed. And look at the backside of his hand right here as he tries to push off. You can see clearly there the backside of that hand touches the ground. And it's different from that left hand where he's pushing off. That backside of that hand is down. I think they're going to give him the touchdown. It looks like it. A 16-yard catch and run by Rodgers as the point after is up and good and another seven on the board. So 28 to 7 now. Texas hanging him out in front of the Bulldogs. What an effort by 1-3 of Texas A&M. So I just noticed that. Jesus is all over. He's trying to get every space of that board. 28-7, Texas A&M. And let's go back to that last touchdown play and get some clarification from our rules analyst, Matt Austin, and, and why that was a touchdown. Matt? Yeah, Dave, the runner, when he puts his hand on the ground, or in this case, the back of his hand, uh, from a rule standpoint, the hand and the wrist are considered all one part of the body. So the back of the hand, the wrist being down, that does not put the runner down. So it was good officiating from the officials to let the play go, see how it was going to end up so they don't end up with an inadvertent whistle. And it was a great job by replay to confirm. So that runner was not down. And also a great run. How about credit to no doubt. Rogers for an excellent run, staying on his feet and his hands. To get into the end zone. Bulldogs need some big plays in a hurry here as we're getting late in the second quarter, just over 520 to go before halftime. A nine yard pickup to Osiris Mitchell. I haven't heard his name being called a lot. He is a big physical receiver on the outside. They got to find ways to get him the football as well, but plenty of time to continue to run the football. They'll try that here with Kylan Hill, and he's not going to go very far. Did he get enough for the first down? He only needed about a yard. And I think it was plenty to move the chains. Buddy Johnson in there to make the tackle. Well, here's the thing for Mississippi State's offense. They have to get a couple first downs. Their defense has been on the field way too much in the second quarter. They got to do some things positively to move these chains, change the field position, but just to give their defense a break. Schrader going over the middle and a little too far. Trying to take a shot down the middle to Dedrick Thomas. They had what they wanted to just an inaccurate pass there from Garrett Schrader. Love the matchup. But you see the numbers on the day for Garrett Schrader hasn't thrown the football well at all. And that bottom stat line of minus three yards does not look like the offense they've had the past few weeks where he's had to pick up the load. Oh, big hole off the left side for Kylan Hill. He's to midfield and a big collision right there, but he picks up 18 yards. Leon O'Neill making the tackle. That's two nice runs for Kylan Hill today. Give this offensive line a lot of credit. And you see number 63 pump pulling around there. Create that hole as well. Ball was tipped and almost picked off. Clifford Chapman had his hands on it and that was heading back to the end zone if he maintains possession. I wonder, was this ball tipped at all? Looks like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and that's why it's a little bit behind. 
Not sure who that was up front. They got a hand on it, but they got a, a piece of that football, which almost led to a big play and possibly a third turnover for Texas A&M. Aggies bringing some pressure. Schrader makes a man miss. Stays on his feet. He'll get close to the first down. They'll spot him at the 38. That'll be good enough to move the chains. Pressure came from Richardson, but Schrader avoided him. And defensive coordinator Mike Elko had the perfect call for this quarterback draw. Richardson, like you mentioned, had the pressure, should have made the play in the backfield. But you mentioned earlier, Gary Schrader's a big, tough runner. Kylan Hill will pick up a yard and a half. Anthony Hines making the tackle. There goes Elijah Blades, who has been injured twice in the first half. Looks like he's got a bad shoulder. He was heading back into that Texas A&M locker room. Trying to get an update on his situation. There goes Elijah. Second down, and let's call it nine. Schrader, good clean pocket, looking all over his progressions. We'll just throw this in away as there was good coverage down the field by the Aggies. Yeah, Dave, perfect coverage on the back end. The one time Texas A&M has not brought any pressure or brought an extra guy down in the box. And nowhere for Gary Schrader to go with the football. Does the right thing of just throwing the football away and living to play another down. But now you're third and long. And in this ball game, anytime they had a third long situation, here comes the pressure from Texas A&M. He'll run it with Hill. Breaks a tackle. Gets to the sideline, trying to pick up that first down. He might be just a bit shy of it. The line to gain was inside the 28. They're going to spot it at the 29. But again, Kylan Hill breaking a tackle. Matter of fact, he's third in the conference in yards after contact. He has, coming into this one, 384 of his 640 yards rushing have been after initial contact. Only two guys in behind. Keyshawn Bond, who we've seen a lot of, and DeAndre Swift. So. He's in good company, and they need it here on his big fourth down. Fourth and less than a yard. He'll go with Hill. Hit and falls forward. Again, initial contact. Can't get him on the ground. And when you see Colin Hill before the ball game, you just see how powerful he is in his lower body. They get good penetration from the inside with number five, Bobby Brown, but he bounces off and picks up an extra yard that you needed with that second effort. Clock at 2.13, 2.12, ticking away before halftime. Schrader. Flags come flying, and Schrader is dropped back at the 37-yard line. Couldn't get rid of the football that time. He'll lose eight. Holding number 75 on the offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Michael Story is your right guard right here. He's going to get called for the holding call. Going against Bobby Brown on the outside and gets the little ET stunt from the inside and just tackles the defensive lineman to the ground. That's why I saw so many penalties come flying in his area. It'll be second down and 18.
Raider. As Green is tied in inside the 20 down to the 16. That should be good enough for the first down, and it is. There's a reason you're able to throw this football here. Look at Callan Hill come over and pick up this blitz. Lyle Gary Schrader time to stand in there and throw that football. And nice throw and catch there on that particular play to pick up a huge first down. Picked up 19 on second and 18. They'll give it to Hill here. Cuts it back. Gets it to the 14-yard line. Gain of two. Clock under a minute, 54 seconds. Timeout taken by the Bulldogs. Boy, they really need to stick this in here. I think touchdown, field goal, the way their offense has moved, down 21. Yeah, you're going to need more than three. And the way Texas A&M is going up and down the field, you need seven points here. they got to find a way to get this football in the end zone. And I think Gary Schrader is getting a little confidence throwing the football down here. But down here in the red zone, the windows are a little bit tighter. And that's one thing when we talked to Gary Schrader, we asked him about what are some things you've learned playing in the SEC. And he, that was the first thing he mentioned. Things happen faster. The windows are tighter. So this is the prime spot where he can put that to, to use here near the red zone, see if he can get it in the end zone. Schrader coming off 304 total yards of offense last week against that LSU defense where he averaged six and a half yards per play. I think one of the things that we were able to notice this week in watching him a little bit more closely is his arm strength is is real. Yeah. And he's been used in the past, I mean, in the run game a lot. So that's why when you think of him, you say that, but he can throw it with the best of them. Just 4 of 14, though, through the air today. They'll keep it on the ground with Kylan Hill. Boy, they are keying on Kylan. He's had a couple of decent runs today where he's broken a tackle at the line of scrimmage. But for the most part, Aggies up front been all over number eight. They don't forget Marty and McGee Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern time, right here on the SEC Network and on the ESPN app. Nobody talks about the Southern culture better than those two guys. Matter of fact, they were over in Baton Rouge today, breaking down that Auburn LSU game. And so they had our good friend Ben McDonald, Mr. LSU, <laughs> yeah. on the set, Big Ben. Outstanding pitcher and now outstanding baseball analyst for us here on ESPN. I talked to Marty when I get to see him every day, and I ask him, you guys have a script? He says, ah, uh, there's a script, but I don't know if we stay to it. They do a great job. I'm sure it was fun down in Baton Rouge. Big gamers, Auburn and LSU today. Hey, how about Kansas State up 24-20? Oh, wow. With just a few seconds before halftime in that one. Kansas State, a team that Mississippi State had a chance to knock off in week three. They lost 31-24. That one is incomplete. Kansas State over Oklahoma, 24-20. Boy, it's that time of the year, man, where you Anything just... think it happened. Right. <laughs> it's the dog days of the season. Any given day, anybody can show up and play some good football. That's the second drop there by Colin Hill in his ball game. They started off the game with a similar play. They had numbers, had leverage, just not able to catch the football and pick up some positive yards. 33-yard field goal just inside the near hash. Jace Chrisman. Four of six on the year. A 51-yarder against Tennessee and will split that one through the upright. So they'll take the three with 37 seconds to go before halftime. Obviously, you want to put points on the board, but I think that was not what they were looking for. They go 63 yards in 16 plates. And they converted on second down and 18 to keep it alive. So you take some positives out of that. Hopefully, you can go into the locker room, regroup a little bit, try to get that man throwing the football a little bit better. Schrader, 4 of 15, 64 yards, a TD and a pick. And he just hadn't had a whole lot of time. He has been under duress, and they have brought pressure, I believe, on 80% of the downs here today to try to get that football out of his hands. But more than anything, I think they're trying to shut down the run lanes against Garrett Schrader and saying, hey, the only way you're going to beat us today is throwing the football. And they've had limited opportunities in the past game. Defensive coordinator Mike Elko said he was, this week, really wanted to muddy the waters for Schrader. Wanted to be aggressive, physical, and be gap sound. 
And I think that uh, for the most part that's been accomplished here in the first half for it by his defense. Yeah, besides for a few runs from Colin Hill, they've done a, a really good job of that. Preston takes it out to the 19 yard line. Kellen Mons Day. He's done it in multiple ways. We saw early in the first quarter he's getting it done with his legs. And then the arm started to show up. He started to find his receivers on the outside, standing in the pocket under a duress. A lot of the times, Mississippi State bringing pressure. But his receivers on the outside, hit their run after the catch has been really big. And Mon has gone, known where to go with the football every single time and made some really good decisions throwing the football here in the first half. So 31 seconds to go before halftime 131 yards passing 43 yards rushing for Mond and he's accounted for four touchdowns today. See if that's not the last play of the first half as Richardson will pick up four. So Texas A&M trying to win back to back games for the first time this year. Meanwhile Mississippi State trying to get out of this quagmire that they're in having lost three consecutive ball games after a three and one start to the season they will trail at the break 28 to 10 don't forget coming up at halftime you can watch the live performance of the fight in Texas Aggie band on SEC Network Plus you can start streaming on the ESPN app so a good half for the Aggies on an early morning here in College Station took them a few possessions to get it cranked up but had a sequence there where they scored on three straight offensive possessions to kind of open this one up a bit here in the first half. And let's get it downstairs to Don, who is corralled, Jimbo Fisher. Well, Coach, you hold them to three there at the end. What have you been able to do to limit them offensively? Well, I think that was a big side. I wish we could have held them back. We didn't need to give up points right there. We're up three scores, could have got it back, got up four, and then got the ball coming out. So we gave up a couple big plays there. We missed fit. So luckily we got that held to three, which was a good job, but we didn't need to get it down there in the first place. But we've done a good job in the run. We busted some fits on the runs and let their back break out, and he broke a tackle once. And uh, for the, in the quarterback, we missed two or three tackles in the backfield. We've had unblocked guys and missed them in the backfield. So get those cleaned up and keep playing well defensively. Kellen Mon, 131 yards in the air. What's been the key to that success? I think he's just making good good decisions. He understands where he's going. He's using his legs smartly. Uh, just making really good decisions with the ball. We need to play another great half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you, Don. 234 yards of offense for Texas A&M. Good enough to put 28 on the board. They lead it by 18. With that, let's get it to the studio. Peter Burns, take it away. Thank you, Dave. Neal. Moments away from third quarter football as Texas A&M leads it by 18 here at home, 28 to 10 over Mississippi State as you're watching SEC football presented by Allstate. Dave Neal alongside quarterback D.J. Shockley. And speaking of quarterbacks, Kellen Mond, what did you make of his first half? I thought he was efficient, throwing the football and using his legs 12 of 17. And he's averaging 10.8 yards every time he runs the football. He's got him in good spots, and he's playing well. Uh, he has to continue that in the third half, I mean, the second half. On the flip side, it's been tough for Schrader, but as we look at our mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate, part of the reason is he hadn't had a whole lot of time to do much. Yeah, defensive coordinator Mike Elko has done what we talked about, muddy the waters for Garrett Schrader. He's been hit multiple times. They're bringing pressure from all types of spots, and they're not able to run the football either. So uh, he's had a tough first half. They haven't done well on third down, haven't converted one yet, but he has been under tons of duress. And I expect the same game plan from Texas A&M in this second half. They both these defensive coordinators today have decided to put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. When you have quarterbacks of these caliber who can hurt you in both ways, you got to make them one dimensional. And right now, Texas A&M is doing it with their legs and throwing the football. But Gary Schrader has struggled in the past game as well as trying to find something with his legs. 168 yards of total offense for Mississippi State, 234 for Texas A&M. Biggest issue for Mississippi State, though, is they got to convert some third downs. They're 0 for 6 today. A&M will get the football first here in the second half. A short kick taken around the 10-yard line by Anaya Smith. Boy, a young man that they are real excited about as they 
big game breaker. Speaking of game breakers, we've got one on the sidelines. Let's go visit with her now, Dawn Davenport. Yeah, guys, simplify, that was the word at halftime for Mississippi State. Head coach Joe Moorhead telling me that defensively, you got to remember, they're out three starters. They were playing a bunch of young guys on that side of the ball. He said, we've got to make sure that our calls are simple, that they know what their assignments are. We've got to allow them to play confident and fast. So that's defensively. Now, on the other side of the ball, I said, how do you get Garrett Schrader going? He said, we got to simplify that as well. Give him some throws he knows he can make, and our playmakers have to make catches for him. Yeah, they need a couple of big plays to kind of spark that offense, but first they're going to have to get the football back. Chauncey Rivers comes up to make the stop on Isaiah Spencer. And Marquis Spencer combined on that tackle. There's Isaiah Spiller, young man in the first half. Rushed for 53 yards, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. 5.1 yards after that last carry. Second down and seven. Four-man rush. Mon. Pass complete this time. It goes to Kendrick Rogers. He'll be stopped just shy of midfield. It's an 18-yard pickup. Kellen Mond, two pass touchdowns, two rush touchdowns today. First time in his career he has done that. And they've done a good job of getting him some easy throws, just like they want to do for Garrett Schrader. That last attempt was simply knowing where to go with the football, but understanding they're playing off coverage, so if they give it to you, you take it. On first down and 10, Mond rolling the pocket right. Hit as he throws. Up in the air, nobody there to catch it. It'll be incomplete. Chauncey Rivers again back there, just dis being a disruptive force on Kellen Mond. Boy, talking to Mond yesterday, just he's got this quiet confidence about him. Um, really enjoyed being around him yesterday. You can just see what a fine young man he is. But I, I just I, I liked it. He just he, you, you could tell he was confident, but he did, wasn't very vocal about it. Dave, I don't know if you know, but most quarterbacks are very quiet, confident no, guys. No, 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 no. I don't no, know no, if you've no. been around many your time or not, no. but you know. <laughs> no, no, no. No, but Kellen, <laughs> Kellen is exactly that, and yeah. he fits well for what Jimbo and his offense likes to do. Well, he gets hit again. This time he gets it off to the tight end. Weidermeyer breaking some tackles. Stays on his feet. The youngster to the house. Touchdown, 52 yards. How is this guy a true freshman? That is a man. True freshmen are not made equal anymore. He comes over on his crossing route. Kellerman again with two guys in his face. Gets an accurate football to what am I on the outside? And then you see that big 6'5", 260-pound frame breaking multiple tackles into the end zone. They don't make true freshmen like they do anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. You and I were talking about him this morning. We saw him warming up and like, how was that guy? How was he playing high school football last year? Kellen Mond knows him and loves him. Had four catches last week. There are some young studs on this A&M team. That's one of them right there. Jalen Weidermeyer. Man knows how to find the end zone. His fifth touchdown grab of the season leads the team now. Jalen Weidermeyer. Just part of a freshman class that's getting a lot of work, including Isaiah Spiller, Anaya Smith. Look at the amount of touchdowns those guys have produced on the year already, but it's Wattemeyer who just had the 52-yard touchdown catch, which happens to be the longest pass play of the year for the Texas A&M offense. How yeah. about that? We talked about it. They have not had many explosive plays in the pass game. Wattemeyer is a guy who can help do that. Isaiah Zuber with the return out to the 25-yard line. Now Garrett Schrader's going to have to start to crank things up if Mississippi State has any hope in this one. Schrader in that first half, just 4 of 15, started the day 0 for 6. 
and no yards on the ground and he has just been bottled up. We showed you some of the highlights coming out of halftime how it's just been tough for him. There hadn't been a whole lot of time to throw the football and when he has tried to run he did have one decent run but it was called back because of holding. And to put that in perspective this is a kid who's averaging around 73 yards a game rushing the football. Yeah. Just not there. Kylan Hill though has picked up some yards today after being bottled up for a few weeks. After the first half, Colin Hill had 79 yards rushing, now up to 83 on the day. Well, for Mississippi State, this is where the ball game is going to be won or lost on early down situations. We talked about how they're over on third down. First and second down are the most critical downs for this offense. Second down and six. Schrader keeps it. He has the first down, and he'll slide over the 40 to the 40 one yard line actually they'll spot it back at the 40 so there's a good gain a good run by Schrader and you can see the emphasis for Texas A&M number eight Colin Hill they're going to make sure he is not a factor and you have two three guys that were so consumed with not allowing Colin Hill to get the football you forget they do have a guy back there in Gary Schrader who can run with it Kylan Hill looking for a little bit of room ran right into Buddy Johnson the middle linebacker he'll pick up two yards and Buddy Johnson is you know he had a big miss tackle in that first half and I'm sure he heard about it and knew he has to play better in the run game but he's been a stalemate for him right in the middle of that defense makes all the calls communicates to everybody up front and on the back end Former high school quarterback is Buddy Johnson. Says he can still sling it if he needed to. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah. We'll ask him about that a little bit more. Second down. Schrader going through his progressions and realizes I better run with this thing and he will get it out to about the 45 yard line. There is Buddy Johnson to wrap him up. Our quarterback making a play. QB on QB. I thought there was an opportunity for Schrader to throw that football on the outside. And I, I don't know if he's just not trusting it or he doesn't feel he can make that throw right now. But the confidence doesn't seem to be there throwing the football, especially outside the hashes for Garrett Schrader. And here's a, a third down where his arm may be needed to pick up the key first down. So Mississippi State will take a timeout. Big third and five coming up. We'll see what happens on the other side. T Network and on the ESPN app. Good vantage point for Kellen Mond. Hoping his defense can get him the ball back here. A third down and five coming up for the Bulldogs. Quick throw coming near side pass is caught by Thomas still on his feet down to the 30 yard line. Good play call coming out of that timeout 25 yard game. Joe Mohort Moorhead knowing they were going to come with pressure as they did. Did a good job of getting that football out on the quick receiver screen. And you can see Thomas making something happen when he got the football in his hand. But that's what I like getting the football out of Gary Schrader's hand knowing Texas A&M is a pressure happy team right now. Good call on the on third down. How about the first third down conversion of the game comes midway through the third quarter here for the Bulldogs. They'll go with Kylan Hill off the left side. Pick up a couple of yards. DeMarvin Leal, another true freshman. Well, we have got so many freshmen on the field for both these teams. It's a glimpse of the future. And this is good. A lot of those young guys getting some quality time in a big time game versus an SEC opponent. These guys have an opportunity to grow up really fast in this type of ball game. And Marvin Leal is 6'4, 290. True freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. And here comes pressure again off the edge. Here they come. Bulldogs pick it up. 
pass is caught inside the 15. What a grab by Thomas and give some credit to Schrader on a throw. A deep out route on the outside here from Thomas. Stems him up inside and now creates that separation and goes up for the football, not allowing that football to, to get to his body. Nice throw and catch by Garrett Schrader and Thomas for another big conversion. Hand it off to Hill. Richardson comes up to make the play. Mississippi State's offensive line today, they have been shuffling those guys in and out. No Stuart Reese, no Greg Island. It has been a mixed bag for that group up front. Again, six starters out today for the Bulldogs. Second down, Schrader almost fell down. He will throw to the corner, and it is dropped. Oh, it was a touchdown in the hands of Osiris Mitchell, but he couldn't hang on. This is the type of play you have to have in a ball game like this. So everything's going to be close. Everything's going to be contested. Osiris has to fight his way back downhill and attack that football. And you see, he just gets beat to the football on the back heel by O'Neal. Schrader could have left that out there a little bit more in front of Mitchell, but nonetheless, that's one the Bulldogs wish they could get back. Another Don, third down. Don said it. The receivers have to make some plays for him. He can put it outside a little bit more, too, but those are plays you got to have. Joe Moorhead wanted to get a timeout. Didn't get it. They'll drop it off underneath. This is going to be six for the Bulldogs. Isaiah Zuber from 14 yards out. Good thing Joe Moorhead didn't get the timeout. <laughs> You're right. That's one of them. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. <laughs> How about that drive? Five and a half minutes, 74 yards. Zuber with the 14-yard catch and run to the end zone. And this had to happen. You needed points. Smith had the Texas and then went down and scored. But Zuber comes all the way across on the shallow cross, and Garrett Schrader does a really good job of climbing in that pocket, keeping his eyes downfield. And Zuber, the run after the catch, pays off for Garrett Schrader at Mississippi State. Point after is up and good by Chris Madden. Well, the Bulldogs needed that in a big way. They get the touchdown pass. Garrett Schrader. Good block by Osiris Mitchell here. Helping his buddy get to the end zone. That's, wow. Didn't see that one coming. Wow. Short kick taken at the five yard line. And the Aggies will have it at the 25. Let's get an update. Let's go down to Dawn. Dave, hits keep coming for this Bulldogs defense. C.J. Morgan safety is now done for the day with an upper body injury. Remember, they're already missing Cameron Dantzler and Marcus Murphy back there. So they're playing two true freshmen at cornerback. Then they also have no Willie Gay at linebacker. Uh, they're just missing a ton of guys. And remember, Coach Joe Moorhead told me at half, you know, we got to get them some confidence. Obviously, that last Texas A&M drive not helping with that. And this is a deflated looking defense on this Mississippi State sideline. Yeah, they need something positive to happen. A good turnover might get them going in the right direction. We'll see if Texas A&M can keep it rolling offensively. They've had some, after the first two or three drives of this game, they've really settled in and pretty confident in what they're doing. And Kellen Mond's been making some plays. And the best thing apart it is Kellen Mond has been the decision maker who has pulled the trigger on a lot of different things in the run or the pass game. He's been good in RPOs. He's thrown the football accurately and used his legs when he needed to. So when he's playing at that style and that level, it makes this Jimbo Fisher offense hard to stop. You saw Fletcher Adams hobble off to the sideline, the senior defensive lineman. Here comes some pressure off the edge by the Bulldogs. Mond over the middle. Nice grab by Jamon Osbin. 
Picks up 14. Had to reach way out in front of him to hold on to that. When you get pressure from the left side, you work away from rotation, backside slant. This is day one football here. A quick slant on the outside, outside leverage, and an accurate thrown football. Here's Spiller with a stiff arm. He'll pick up seven yards before he's pushed out of bounds by Landrews. And now Tix and him going with a little tempo, going a little bit faster. And Don mentioned so many guys on that Mississippi State defense are out. Now you force them to play a lot of vanilla defense with the tempo and with second and third string guys that are in there not used to playing together. Again, no Willie Gay, no Lee Autry, two starters on defense along with Cam Dantzler in the secondary. So at least one guy at every level, one of your stud players out for the Bulldogs. And Kellen Mond trying to turn the corner and pick up the first down. He'll be stopped at midfield, about a yard shy. There's Fletcher Adams. He's trying to get back in. Still trying to shake off the effects of whatever is ailing him. Remember last time Texas A&M had a third and one. They were in five wide and weren't able to pick it up. Here's a different look here on a third and one. A couple tight ends in the ball game. I think this is a more downhill play for Texas A&M than they had early in the ball game. Ryan Rennick, the tight end, goes in motion. They'll run it out of the eye formation and have the first down. Just power football. And that time A&M wins. At the line of scrimmage, four yard gain. Yeah, I think Jimbo got into the mindset of we're not going to play around on these third and shorts. We need to pick these up and continue to keep the, the chains moving because they have Mississippi State on their heels right now. But at this ball game, or if Mississippi State has any chance in this ball game, their defense has to find a way to get some stops and get the football back to their offense. Big plays have been an issue for Texas AM, not a whole lot of them. Timbo Fisher telling us yesterday in today's game it generally comes from like a short catch and a guy breaking a couple tackles. Which is so true with so many middle field safeties they're just not allowed to have that. Helen Mond trying for a big play here. He'll have the first down after a gain of about 14 yards. See where they spot it. They'll spot it right near the 30 so give him 16 on that carry. Don't read action again. You see number 52 gets pushed down inside, and now you get the edge, and Kellen Mond does the smart thing of getting out of bounds. But it's all about reading that in, and if that end crashes, you pull it. Kobe Jones was in no man's land. He could not get the back or the quarterback, and Kellen Mond, another really good decision with the football. Two tight end look again for Texas A&M. Rodgers split way to the near side here, and some movement up front. Like Brian Cole was trying to jump that snap count. He's timed it up a couple times. Not that time. Prior to the snap, full start. 65 Ooh. on the offense. Hey Five now. yard penalty. First down. And more. Left tackle. Popped up. There he is right on the other side over there, right there. Ooh, you could... <laughs> Cole was clearly <laughs> offside as well, I might add. Well, it's two referees. <laughs> yes. Who did they see first? <laughs> Cole. The senior safety. Four tackles today. It's a first and 15. Spiller will pick up four. Clock winding down to three and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Texas A&M doesn't mind this style here. They're still moving the football at their own pace. They control the time possession in the first half. Here comes Cole again off the edge. The safety now he'll back off. That thing is batted right into the hands of Kendrick Rogers. Jalen Wademeyer was right there. It bounced off him and right to Rogers. Seven yard game. Mississippi State wanted to look like it was pressured. Number the stick right here by Jalen. You see his head look upfield before hey. he tucked that football away. And Kendrick Rogers says, Thank you, I'll take it. 
Yeah, another catch for Kendrick. <laughs> Ball just bouncing your way. Wanemeyer already with a 52-yard touchdown catch of this game, trying to help get other others involved. He's at his, right? Look at that. Just the, you never think freshmen would be that considerate. Want to get their other guys involved in the offense? Kudos to him, man. Third down and four. Osbin to the 10 and fall down at the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Aggies after another 16-yard game. Watch this route. Watch this setup. Goes outside, sticks him, and then comes inside. Creates that separation and no chance on the outside for Jaron Jones. Toss to Spiller to the five, and he's out of bounds there. He'll be run out of bounds by Preston. It's just been tough for Mississippi State to be right. They brought pressure and haven't been able to get to Kellerman. They played the zone and he's picked them apart. And now they play some man coverage and the receivers are winning at the line of scrimmage, creating that separation and making easy throws for Kellerman. Spiller, touchdown, Texas A&M. His first touchdown of the day. Boy, just another long drive, 11 play, 75 yards. And look at right guard, 55, Kenya Green, true freshman, get in there and open that hole up for him. And Spiller with a hole like that, it's easy to get into the end zone there. Point after is up and good. 42-17. Six and a half minutes off the clock. Another youngster, Isaiah Spiller, the true freshman from Spring, Texas, finds Pater. Isaiah Spiller. Gets it in the end zone, this fifth touchdown of the year. And we're starting to see what this freshman class has the potential to become. You see this uh, 2019 recruiting class ranked third by ESPN. Kenyon Green, who's a starter on that offensive line. The five-star prospect, but 16 four-stars. Right now, the 2020 class ranked in the top 20, depending on who you're looking at, 15, 16. But there are some guys out there, you start hearing some names out there that they could push up into a top 10. And Zuber will get it out to the 20-yard line. But today, the freshman, excuse specifically Jalen Weidemeyer and Isaiah Spiller have had a huge impact in this one. And you see Richardson, Devontae Richardson in the secondary is a safety who played really big for him. You see the lead block there going off that right side behind Kenyon Green there. And then you see the tight end, Wadamai. We talked about the 52 yard touchdown he had here, breaking tackles. Each guy has contributed in one way or fashion. And then Spiller, who's starting to come on here late in the year as the premier back for Tex Texas AM. There is a lot of talent here in Texas a &E. Kylan Hill run out of bounds by Leon O'Neill after a three yard pickup. Spiller chasing down another hundred yard game. He has two already this season. This would be his first if he can get there against an SEC opponent. Kylan Hill also chasing 100 yards today. He has 90 on the ground, averaging 5.3 yards per game, uh, per carry. Schrader, quick throw, and that one's dropped. Boy, it has not been a good day for Osiris Mitchell. He's had a couple that he would love to have a do-over. Somebody just seemed like they'd come out awkwardly. I'm not sure if that one was tipped at all. He had another one that was tipped early in the ball game. But you're right. Cyrus Mitchell has struggled on the outside, and you see Coach Joe Moore there is not a happy camper with him. 
four, way his offense has performed today. Four targets, just one catch for Osiris Mitchell. And this is muddy in the water. Look at all these guys right here in the box in the eyes of Garrett Schrader. Are they coming or are they not? And I think Mississippi State was able to get a timeout as the play clock was just about to hit zero. And Joe Moorhead able timeout. to get the attention of second. our officiating crew. Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds. 3 4. It's so 34 seconds to go before the end of the third quarter. It gives us an opportunity to tell you that coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern, college football season week nine will continue on. South Carolina taking on Tennessee at Neyland Stadium. That's an interesting matchup. And, of course, tonight we'll cap things off with our SEC Saturday night. Missouri taking on Kentucky, another one that has some big things in store for that one. Missouri coming off a tough loss. And can Kentucky can get, continue to get Lynn uh, Bowden to perform at the level he's been performing at as a quarterback. Yeah. It's been impressive what he's been able to do. He has, and, you know, he's a guy that plays some quarterback in high school, and uh, they expected some big things out of him. You see what's going on in the West as well. Mac Jones getting his start there versus Arkansas. So second, excuse me, third down and seven. Two of eight today on third down conversions. Here comes some more pressure and a false start. Tommy Champion saw some of that pressure coming from the back end and. Yeah, Dave, that's uh. What they say, couldn't hold his water. Yeah, that's, that's tough to do. You see him coming down creeping and you know they're about to bring some pressure. Offside on the defense, number three, five yard penalty, third down. Ooh. Boy, Tyree Johnson. The other side. Champion bailed out there. You can see right on the left side over here. Oh, I'm wondering where the offsides was. Maybe lined up initially offsides. That's the only thing I can think of. He is lined up offside now. Scratch that off the record of Tommy Champion. Schrader runs left side. He is tripped up around the 34 yard line, and that'll be good enough to pick up the first down. So they convert as the clock ticks at 25 seconds and it's moving. Then Coach Moorhead wants to take this into the possibly into the fourth quarter. And that will do it for the third quarter as Bulldogs and the Aggies will switch sides of the field. 15 more minutes to go from Kyle Field here in College Station, Texas. The Aggies looking impressive, leading at 42 to 17 on an SEC Saturday. Texas A&M, I would say, has been balanced in every quarter. All told, 42 on the board for the Aggies here at home. Mississippi State sitting on 17. They do have the football first down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Well, they just showed the a brief glimpse of Kansas State and Oklahoma game where Kansas State is putting it on the Sooners, 41 to 23. Big hole up the middle. Kylan Hill will switch hands with a football and get it inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. And he just went over 100 yards after that 39-yard scamper. That's three big plays for Kylan Hill out of the backfield. And just a trap play on the outside. They come across Tyree Phillips, trap that outside, inside linebacker. And Kylan Hill, you give him that crease, and he's going to make you pay like he did there. 129 yards. Three prior games, 92 total. Good to see Kylan back in his groove. His eighth career 100-yard game. Schrader will keep it, and he gets it to the 20-yard line before he is slammed. 
to the turf by Tyree Johnson who may have knocked the wind out of him. He's grabbing his stomach and asking for some help as he comes off the field. Now we get Jeremiah Martin back on the field. Second down. Schrader, a little stutter step, keeps it himself. Schrader hit around the 13, but he'll have the first down. He picks up eight. He does such a good job holding this to the very last moment. He had no idea he had the football, and watch the little juke here at the end. Just enough to get him a couple more yards with that big physical frame that he has. But the action in the backfield was so critical in that play being a success. Pressure comes. Schrader hit as he throws. He gets the pass off. That one is caught by Dedrick Thomas. He'll pick up four. Pressure came from Damani Richardson. Just a step late. I don't know why they haven't used much more of these screens, especially to the receivers, with the aggressive nature of this Texas a and defense for most of the game. They ran those screens, and they worked successfully every time they've had it. Second down and six. Kylan Hill, nice stutter step inside the five. He's down to the two-yard line. And now here we go. Some pushing and shoving again. Flags come out. This is the second time we've seen this this afternoon. Oh, Darrell Williams, the big general down there. You don't want to lose him. Preseason All-American at 6'3", 310 who hasn't allowed or has allowed just one sack since the start of 2017. You got to have him on the field. You can see he's he's fired up down there. They're still trying to calm him calm him down. He's a senior so he wants it all to work out for the result him. of the play is a first down unsportsmanlike conduct number 73 on the offense unsportsmanlike conduct number eight on the defense those penalties offset first down that is the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game for both players so DeMarvin Leal also involved in that little skirmish there he is on the ground gets a little extra on the ground and his teammates see it. Texas and I'm not going to allow you just to mush this guy while you're laying on the ground. They want to come to the defense of their defensive counterpart. But you see Darrell Williams there. Makes all the calls up front. Communicates well for them. First and goal. Hill tries to leap for it. Did he get the ball? And he did. He crossed the plane. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Right at the last second, stretches the ball out over the goal line, and Kylan Hill picks up six for the dogs. Kylan Hill, 5'11", 215, trying to show off his vertical here. You get that football over? Yes, he does. That's a touchdown. Love the effort there by Kylan Hill. It's not enough to pull him back. Hundred and thirty eight yards on twenty carries for Kylan Hill. Going after up and good. When he's going well, this Mississippi State offense seems to be doing well, but they've got a long way to go. Third teams are just Dominant until you get on the field. Ryan Rennick, the tight end with a return out over the 30 yard line, which the college playoff talk leads us to this in terms of percentages of getting a team into the playoff. SEC at 98% right now, the Big Ten at 92%. The Big 12 might take a big old shot right here if Oklahoma loses. They're at 51%. Notre Dame. 12% chance to get into the college football playoff. What are names that you're still saying there's an opportunity? There's still a chance. <laughs> These teams in front of them keep losing like Oklahoma. 
Matter of fact, they just did give up the six, so now it's 48 points on the board for wow. Kansas State over Oklahoma. Unbelievable. Spiller nowhere to go. He'll lose two or three yards on that carry. Let's go down and get an update with Dawn. Yeah, Dave Jarian Jones went into the locker room, spent some time there, came back out with his right wrist, specifically his right thumb, heavily taped up. Almost looks like a club on his right wrist now, but he came back out, put his helmet on, was ready to go in. Boy, and Dawn, and now Fletcher Adams down on the ground as well. I mean, they are just, uh, this is just incredible what's going on today. Well, we were just talking about Kansas State, Oklahoma. Let's get back to the studio. What's going on now, guys? All right, Dave, Halloween's not till next Thursday, but Oklahoma's defense in 2019 dressed up as 2018 Oklahoma defense. How about this? K-State just getting it done early and often and again and again and again. Now, 41-23, an opportunity to punch it in. 48-23, 25-point lead for the Wildcats. Oh. Wow. That is crazy what's going on there. I mean, that's, that's just that's that's a beatdown. Here are the remaining undefeated teams. App State playing today against South Alabama. They were up big. They're about to go to 7-0 and as well. But you can uh, perhaps chalk off Oklahoma. With that offense, you don't ever know. But you're talking about four-score, four-possession game now. Well, that's the difference. You can't stop them. It looks like Kansas State is going up and down the field. Every time you look up there, somewhere near their end zone. So... Even if you're scoring points, you can't match them point for point in that ball game. And Oklahoma looks to be in some serious trouble. Speaking of trouble, that is trouble for the Bulldogs. Fletcher Adams being helped off the field. Second time we've seen him leave today. It looked like he may have tweaked an ankle or something earlier in this game, and now he's being helped off the field for a second time. Here's Kellen Mond, a little quarterback draw. He'll slide down around the 35, and don't see a flag boy you and I saw a dangerous play last week Mo Hassan the quarterback for Vanderbilt did that same type of play and slid as he's taught to feet first and got popped by a diving Missouri defender right in the head and concussed knocked out of the game and just a scary play well, that's the part of the game that I think Jimbo likes about Kellerman when he does take off and take care of himself and Gives himself up there and doesn't take any extra hits. Well, I've missed twice on who was offside today, so I'm not saying <laughs> anything. 54 offense, five yard penalty, third down. I think we've both been old for on the day. It's Carson Green right there, gets called for the false start. Well, now you push it back to third and 13. Jimbo's like, are you kidding me? I've been calling plays for a long time, <laughs> but I don't have many third and 13s. See what Mississippi State decides to do. They've tried to mix it up throughout this ball game and bring some pressure. And it looks like Brian Cole off the edge may be attempting to bring some pressure. And Spiller is wrapped up. No gain on the play. Brian Cole with his fifth tackle. And we haven't seen this happen many times, but Mississippi State gets a stop. And we talked about it in the third quarter. If they was going to give themselves any opportunity in this ball game to get back in it, their defense had to get some stops. And well, there you go. Good chance to see best punter in college football, maybe in history since last year. He had the best average in the history of the sport. And a chance to really air one out here, and he does hit a boomer. That's dropped around the 12-yard line. Zuber falls on it. That one goes 57 yards. Dude's amazing, isn't he? Never thought I'd come watch a punter. Dude can let it go. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. If you're an Aggie fan, been a good day for you here at Kyle Field. Kellen Mond has just been steady Eddie at the quarterback position this afternoon. 
Jeez, accounted for five touchdowns. Mond today is 17-23, 234, three touchdown passes, no interceptions. Keeps playing like this. Good things are in store down the stretch for the Aggies. Yeah, it's been fun to watch him today. I know Jimbo's going to be excited to watch that film and see how well he's played. Over the middle pass is caught by Davis. Big gainer out to the 40-yard line, and he loses the football, and the Aggies have it. Bulldogs pointing like he was down. Excuse me, Stephen Gidry on that catch. Gidry just had a – it was a routine play, it appeared, and then Jones just comes in there and strips it out. Yeah, that football looked like it's clearly out. It was close to his elbow hitting that ground, but as you can see, right before that elbow hits the ball, hits the ground, that ball is loose and out. Yes, that will be a turnover, but Gidry. Well, that's close to being down, but I. Recovered by Texas A&M. Yeah, I think that ball was moving before yeah. that elbow gets down. I think that'll go as a fumble, but it was close. It's that left elbow you're watching for, but that ball is loose before the yep. elbow hits down. I don't think this will take long for them to confirm. knee hit the ground before the ball comes free I don't think so yeah, I again think, I, I think, think it, that it, ball's loose and it, you know he's kind of on the defender as well too I don't think the shin hits the ground Chapman in on that tackle as well as Jones kind of creating that separation and and Matt Austin a rules analyst what do you see I mean same thing we're looking at yeah, Dave, I, I agree with everything you said. That left shin or knee could have got on the ground. I, I can't distinguish one leg from another, to be honest with you. The other point is the player was definitely still moving forward, gaining yardage, so it's not a question of forward progress. So if the ball did come out before the knee was down, it's definitely a fumble and a turnover. Well, all down to the guys' opinions in the replay booth. After further review, the ruling on the field stands of a fumble recovered by Texas a yeah, I, I, down. I just don't think there was enough there to overturn that call. Like I said, it's so uh, the margin of error was so small and minute there to try to turn that call over. So, partner, we are correct. We've got one right today, right? As long as it's not an offsides for me, we're good. <laughs> I'm okay with the other stuff. The I'm having a hard time seeing that. You see Joe Moorhead just look down. I mean, there you go. You get a big play, get the ball toward midfield, and. This offense is really their last three drives prior to that one. It amassed 216 yards. They held the football for 14 minutes, a couple of touchdowns and a field goal. It looked like they were going that direction again. And now they turn it over to the Aggies and Isaiah Spiller. And he'll pick up three yards. And now this is all about Texas A&M just taking this clock down as far as they possibly can. Get out of here and get set for a stretch run with four games remaining after this one. Jimbo Fisher and company non-conference game next week against Texas San Antonio and then it's South Carolina Georgia and LSU matter of fact this is a great opportunity Texas A&M they've never played at Georgia since they've been a member of the SEC as Spiller off the right side and they haven't been to Georgia since 1980 Wow guess who was playing for the dogs in 1980 Ooh. One of the greatest of all time. Who's Herschel, that guy? Herschel Walker. Yeah, I've heard of him once or twice. I heard he's pretty good. That's when uh, the Saggy team back in the old Southwest Conference days, they actually opened up that season in 1980. They opened up with a game against Ole Miss and a game against Georgia. <laughs> well, this, this schedule towards the end doesn't get any easier. No. Both, road, both games on the road. So this is a game that they need it for sure, but need it for confidence-wise on both sides of the ball. To clean up a lot of things because that stretch run is going to be pretty tough. 
Timeout taken by Texas A&M. 841 to go in the contest. Aggies up 42 24. We'll step aside. George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. Also the burial site of George H.W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States. He and his wife, Barbara Bush, located on a 90-acre site. Well, there's a lot of land out here. <laughs> say the least. That's only 10 acres less than you have at home. Yeah. So. On, on the compound, on the Neal compound, <laughs> right? You don't have compounds in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> I tell you that. Kellen Mond will pick up five. There's also a presidential library over in Starkville. A lot of people don't know that. Ulysses S. Grant Presidential Library. These two schools. Only two schools in the SEC to have that. I wonder if Jimbo's been over there. I'll ask him next week when we come. I'm not to town. sure. I would say maybe no. I could be wrong. We'll ask him. We'll check with him. First down and 10. Spiller will pick up four or five yards, give us an opportunity to get it back to the studio, get an update. All right, thank you, Dave Neal. We got a good one coming up. Jeremy Pruitt. The Vols have had some success against South Carolina in Knoxville, 16 and 3, 52 minutes. He'll kick off there. But Will Muschamp, 7 and 0 all time as a head coach facing the Vols. Something's got to give. Yeah, that's going to be a good game, I think. I, that, that, um, Two teams with some com competitive fire. I know it's been a tough week. Will Muschamp's out there. He's been. Mm. He has caused. Uh, He's challenged a couple people the yes. last few days, right? To say the least. I know this. Those two coaches right there will have their guys physically ready to go. They will play with a lot of heart and energy. South Carolina, Tennessee, similar to what we have here today. Teams fighting to try to get into bowl contention and. Those games are very critical. Tennessee, Jerry Gantano, South Carolina, Ryan Holinsky, two quarterbacks. You know, I think South Carolina's playing a little bit better right now. And last year, Tennessee had a chance, last game of the season, against Vanderbilt to get bowl eligible and just did not play very well. Commodores ended up going to a bowl game. Here's Kellen Mond. He'll keep it himself. Kellen will have the first down inside the 20. Will pick up six and a half yards, tripped up there by Brian Cole. Just cannot say enough of what Kellerman has done today and the decisions that he's made. I've harped on it throughout this entire ball game that he is the key to this offense, and he has done a really good job today. That was a situation there where they wanted to throw the football, didn't force it downfield, and just used his leg to pick up the first down. Richardson on the carry off the left side, driving inside the 10 to the 5 and run out of bounds. He took three or four Bulldogs with him. Straight downhill power, and you see Richardson running with that. Look at those legs turning and carrying three, four, five Bulldogs as he was hit five, six yards down the field, end up picking up another first down. Tough, hard run from Richardson. First and goal from the five yard line. They'll go with Richardson off the right side. He'll get it down to about the two yard line. Texas A&M came in scoring a touchdown in the red zone 55% of the time. Today they are five for five in touchdowns inside the red zone trying to make it a perfect six for six if they could stick this one in here. That'll make that guy right there very happy. Jimbo Fisher being efficient in the red zone, getting touchdowns, out field goals, putting a lot of pressure on the opposing team's offense to score and match. Now that pistol formation. They'll go Richardson again to the right side, and he powers his way into the end zone. 
Make it six for six for the Aggies today. On the outside, Jalen Watermeyer saw him a big, tough run early in the ball game. You see Richardson come in there and follow right behind him and get the touchdown. Another tough physical run. Right here, you got your freshman tight end leading the way for Canary Richardson to get into the end zone. Run zone for Errol Thompson to get to the end zone. Big day for Texas A&M, up 49 to 24. Turned out to be a gorgeous day here in College Station. Not so pretty for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State as they have given up 49 points now to the Aggies. 4.53 to play in this one. And if you're Mississippi State, you're trying to find some positives. And, I, you know, I, I think they've had some success. It took a while, but they did have three drives in a row and looking like they were going for four in a row where they sustained drives, resulted in points on the board, and they coughed it up their last possession after a big play. And Kylan Hill, his game changed a little bit today as he has put together a fantastic performance on the ground with 138 yards rushing, averaging almost seven yards a carry. Yeah, he was, as Schrader knocks off a, a big run here, but he was a part of this ball game, and I said he has to touch the football 20 to 25 times, and they did that, And but that was the part of the ball game they were not able to get going was Schrader running the football. He struggled in this ball game running the football, so Colin Hill had to pick up the slack. Schrader, 11 carries, 32 yards, 9 of 22 throwing the football. We'll throw it here. Trying to push it down the field and almost a spectacular grab on that far side, but it'll go incomplete. They were trying to hit Austin Williams. Look for Chapman back there in coverage. And that's one thing that they really have stressed is we want to play tight defense on the outside. They want to be aggressive, but they also want to contest every throw. And Texas A&M has done that. And the numbers show that for Gary Schrader, why they haven't been able to throw the football and be efficient doing it. Another false start. Parsons staff, false start. Number 63 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Please reset the game clock to 419. 419. Thank you. Fifth penalty today for Mississippi State. To make that four for Mississippi State, five for Texas A&M. Four-man rush. Incomplete. Trying to hit Williams again. And this is where Mississippi State has struggled, not just today, but throughout the year when they've had to throw the football they just have not been that much of a threat down the field. And defenses know it. They brought the pressure today. I thought it was a really good plan for Mike Elko and Texas A&M. They added another guy to the box, played man coverage on the outside, and forced Gary Schrader to throw the football into tight windows. No rush four again. Schrader throws. This one is caught. Three times they have tried to hit Williams on this drive, and finally they connect Devin Morris back in coverage. Now it'll be fourth down and about five and a half, maybe six yards coming up. Mississippi State this year. Two of seven on third down attempts. 
Looking at fourth down and a long five. And the play clock winds down, but they do get another timeout just before it hits zero. So with that timeout, it gives us a chance to talk about our five-star play of the day, which is brought to you by Yellowwood. There's actually a couple of plays, a couple of nice touchdowns by Texas A&M. And the ball came out quick, and his receivers, I thought, were so aggressive after the catch, fighting, clawing, trying to get to the end zone. And then when you have freshmen that are built like this, just get them the football and let them go. Broke four or five tackles there, Jalen Watermeyer and Kelly Mon is like, yeah, I love you, brother. We're having a good day today. I would say that that is a very efficient and effective day all the way around for Kellen Mond. 76 yards on the ground with two TDs. 17 of 23, 234 through the air, no picks. And remember, their first three drives, they didn't really do much with them. And then they got it cranked up and rolling in the right direction. So from the 43-yard line, fourth down and five coming up. Schrader trying to bounce out of that pocket. Will throw on the run, and the catch is made for a first down by Isaiah Zuber as he'll pick up six. Schrader did everything he could to buy time, but watch the hands right here, Zuber. This is a strong catch here by Zuber to come down with that to convert that fourth down. That's a difficult catch, but he does a really good job of bringing that into his body and coming down with a, with a big time catch. So first down. Schrader again bumped out of the pocket. He'll run for a few yards. Pick up five on that one. Tyree Johnson putting the pressure on the quarterback. Got seven pressures today by Texas A&M on Garrett Schrader. Sacked him a couple times and uh, there probably was a couple more times they had an opportunity to get him and he broke the tackle of a few guys but to say he's been on the duress is an understatement today. Kylan Hill. Pick up the first down and get out of bounds inside the 35. Carper runs him out there and a gain of 11 so the numbers getting better and better for Kylan Hill. Now up to 150 yards rushing on 21 carries. Well, that's more like Kylan Hill, the guy we saw the first month of this season. Yeah. Four 100-yard rushing games. And for the development of Garrett Schrader, he has to continue this style of play to help his quarterback and create some more windows on the outside or everybody will continue to load the box and force Schrader to beat you. Batted out of the air. Some pressure came off the edge. For Mississippi State, they got to hit the road again. They're in the midst of a five-game stretch where four of them are on the road. It wraps up next week at Arkansas. Then they take a week off and face Alabama and wrap it up with Abilene Christian and, of course, the Egg Bowl on November 28th against Ole Miss. Over the middle high throw, trying to hit Zuber there. It's incomplete. 159 to play in this one. And again, as he lets that football go, he's taking another hit. That ball's a little high. But Schrader has been hit every time he's thrown the football, it seems like today. And they have not been able to connect with the receivers on the outside because of that pressure. Schrader keeps it himself, has the first down to the 20-yard line. Picks up 14 there. Richardson tripped him up. Richardson having a nice day with seven tackles, couple of pressures, forced a fumble. True freshman.
Schrader will throw. Lofts it to the end zone, and that one is incomplete. Trying to hit Osiris Mitchell. Now we got a flag down and a player down. Holding on the offense, number 63. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Debbie on Renfro. Slow to get up, but walking off under his own power. Debbie on Renfro up here at the top up here. Playing man coverage. And you can see just non contact trying to drive off of him. And speculate what it is, but it's just not good coming out of that break. Well, the holding penalty backs him up to the 30 yard line. So, first down and 20. They'll swing it to Kylan Hill. Oh, well, Farai Green just couldn't get his hands on the defender, and that caused problems as Hill will lose 10. Some frustration by the Bulldogs. This will be their fourth consecutive loss. They will have lost five of their last six. And look, they were close to beating Kansas State in, in week three. They lose that one by a touchdown. They had a chance to start 4-0. Oh. And yeah, you look at the last, you know, you talk about the last three games and giving up 56 points to Auburn and 36 last week to LSU. Down the middle, pass is caught. Isaiah Zuber. In for the touchdown, his second touchdown grab of the day. That one goes 37 yards. Zuber, they are excited about him. He's right in the slot, and he just runs right through the middle of this defense and untimed the jump there. And you, you can see he can throw the football really well when he needs to. Puts enough air on that football, and Zuber does a really good job of hanging on and being able to get into the end zone. But just Leon O'Neal just timed that jump pretty badly there and allowed Zuba to get behind him. They're going to go for two here. And Schrader just lost it up in the air and it is incomplete well certainly you come to this stadium on this day and you see a lot of maroon on the field and we were get, just talking about it like how do you know the difference between one shade of maroon and the other well you decided <laughs> to go on the street dj and check in with some of these texas a and m students to see if they know the difference in the shades of maroon this week's edition of Four Downs, we are on Texas A&M campus for the big game, and we're going to ask their students, do they know their maroon? Which one do you think is Texas A&M? i got to say, I think this one's Texas. I think this one's Mississippi State. All right, open them up. Let's see. And this one is Mississippi State. Okay, know that one. Okay, so pick it up and see. Oh! Oh, yikes. <laughs> Which maroon is Texas A&M? Maroon. I actually have no idea, sir. <laughs> no? I have no idea. I gotta go with this one. 100%. 100%. Let's see it. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> He's spot on. Mike gets it. <laughs> nice job, man. All right. It's, I tell you what, when you actually see them side by side, you can tell the difference, but when you stand where we are and you see them, it's. It looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> it was a couple people, though, that. When we asked them all, uh, some of the students, when we put up to them, they kind of looked at their own gear they had on because they yeah. were a little unsure themselves. So Anaya Smith will pick up this football, and he will be wrapped up there. 42 seconds to play in this one. And, uh, DJ, 
obviously Texas A&M has been trying to just search for something. Consistency, I guess, is the best word to use. You look at their one-loss record. It's win one, lose one, win one, lose one. They're going to win back-to-back games for the first time. If you're an A&M fan, you just saw this. What gives you excitement as you move forward? I think the fact that you have a lot of young guys that are contributing and playing a high role. We saw Spiller today play really well. You're talking about uh, Kelly Mon, who is really becoming a better passer. Wadamari, we saw him break a couple of tackles. There is a lot of youth infused in this team, and they're playing better, and they're playing in these environments that's going to help them down the road. Yeah, as Jimbo Fisher was talking to us yesterday, they just need some more recruiting classes like this one where you got guys that can come in right away, play some football. Um, you know, and listen, let's face it right now, there's an opportunity for young guys to come in here and get some work early on. There are some teams where that's not necessarily the case, but you do have a great recruiting pitch to go out and sell some of these kids. Hey, here's an opportunity for you to get on the field as a true freshman. Yeah, Texas a &M came in here with playing 15 true freshmen. That's the ultimate selling point for recruits when they come is, well, I better play early. And Jimbo Fisher can turn on the tape and say, here, we've had 15 true freshmen play this year. And that bodes well for recruiting, I think. That might just be the last play of the game as Texas A&M will put 49 on the board today and win this one by 19 points. The Aggies amass 439 yards of offense. Give the Bulldogs some credit. They put up 433, but not enough on the scoreboard where it really matters. Kellen Mond so effective and efficient today. Just six incompletions and 23 attempts. He accounted for five touchdowns. 207 yards rushing for the Aggies. And 234 through the air. So Texas A&M wins back-to-back -back games for the first time this year. They go to 5-3 and three on the season. Meanwhile, different story for the Bulldogs who go to 3-5. and five, And they have now dropped four in a row and five of their last six. Kylan Hill, though, a bright spot, over 100 yards rushing. Kylan put together a fantastic performance, averaging over seven yards a carry, 21 rushes, 150 yards, but not enough. And certainly, it'll be a long week in Starkville as they get ready to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks, who play Alabama later on tonight. Let's go down to Dawn. All right, I'm here with Kellen Mon. Kellen, 234 yards passing, almost 430 total yards from this offense. What keyed your success in the air today? Uh, just being able to be disciplined from the start to finish, and uh, defense helped us really well with getting turnovers and, and having really good field position. So, a uh, real big team win for us. We talked to you yesterday about these young guys, your weapons and your targets, your true freshmen. What did you see out of those guys today? Uh, I mean, in this offense, we need to make plays and. Uh, Isaiah, Jalen, uh, both those guys were able to make big time plays for us, and uh, Jalen was able to make a big time, uh, you know, run after catch for us. So uh, just being able to make plays for all of us, and uh, it's another big win for us. I, Coach Fisher has talked about your comfort level, how he sees it week after week, just translate onto the field. Two rushing touchdowns for you today as well. Where was that comfort? Um, I was really high, and you know, it starts in practice, so. Um, I thought the offensive line did a really good job, and you know, especially with the play calling, being able to mix a lot of things up today. Um, so we were able to keep the defense on their heels. So uh, really, a really good offense and team win for us. Congratulations, Kellen. Thank Guys. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Kellen. You'll feel pretty good about his performance today. He and Coach Fisher will look over that uh, tape tomorrow and evaluate it as they get ready to take on Texas San Antonio. So the final score once again, 49-30 A&M wins it over Mississippi State. Don't forget it. It's SEC now. Let's get it to the studio.